got to thank the choir and music team for putting everything together, missing Pastor Neil and Doris. I, I, I want to thank them for doing a wonderful job. Um, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to start out with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the kingdom, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I kind of, thank you. I kind of want to start with the Lord's Prayer because when uh, Neil called me last night and said he couldn't make it, I was like, oh, panic. What do you want me to do, a sermon, Neil? Oh, no. But he said, no, no, Andrew, calm down. Just do, get, do some testimonies and, and just uh, we'll fill in space that way. So I thought I would start out with my quick testimony. And up until 30 seconds ago, I really didn't know what I was going to say. But other than thinking about what got me to come to this church, which was Dana, it took her about a year. She was coming here, maybe two years before she convinced me to come. But my very first service, I sat right there. And when Phil got through, I was bawling, just bawling, because he was talking about forgiveness, something that I wasn't used to doing. I, wasn't, I had no idea what forgiveness was. But at that time, I was pretty hostile at pretty much all the humanity in the world and everyone around me. I just was, I hate to say it, I was homicidal. I was just mad. But next thing you know, I was just crying and bawling. And I realized what forgiveness is all about. It's a gift. It's not a, something that anyone deserves, but it's a gift for us. Because when we're mad and holding grudges, as people trespass against us, the only one that, that gets hurt is us. But once we forgive someone, that burden is just thrown off her shoulders and they can go about their day, but I'm gonna go happily about my day. So my testimony is this, this church taught me how to forgive and I'll give one more forgiveness story and I'm gonna pass this on to Mr. Onion. But I didn't realize how, how stupid it was not to forgive until I realized I had been mad at a guy that had been dead four or five years. I was, and every time they'd mention his name, I'd, oh, I want it. And I thought, how, how dumb is that? But I, I, I extrapolated that forward, it's the same thing with a live guy. It doesn't make sense to be mad at, at someone that's alive because number one, they don't care and it's not good for your health. And God gave us that gift to forgive and it's a gift for us, not for anyone else. But that being said, Mr. Onion, can I, hopefully you're better prepared for a testimony than I am. <laughs> and this is also an open mic. If anyone has something to say, uh, feel free to, to, to come on up. Thank you, Jim. Good morning. Good to see y'all. Uh, you know, the story is, you know, a little forgiveness. And uh, the Lord is so good, isn't he? To each one of us, each in a special way. I can see some people out there that have been sick the last few weeks. And you're back here again. And one person be out, then the, the spouse has to be out or something like that. Well, this week, last week was a very particular week. Mary chose this song to sing. And uh, I had to stay home with mom so she could come because it wasn't a good day. Mom has her good days and bad days. And I could tell you some stories about that. But anyway, anyway, uh, I heard it was a, she, when I went out to, when she came home, I had a deacon's meeting last week. And the, the problem was I wanted to be there on time because I'm the secretary and I like to get everything squatted down before. So I said, I don't know why she's not home. She, want, she stayed the entire service. Why did she send it to, she, I told her to come home after the song. So she, so I said, I was really upset, you know, and I said, okay. She comes driving up, and it's, you know, about 5 till time. We usually about, we go about 12 o'clock, we start the, the, the deacons meeting. So I was up there, and I was going to go outside and give her a thing. And I I don't know if the Lord just took me by the hand, you know, Jim, don't say nothing. But he probably did. I said, well, how did it go, Mary? Oh, it went beautiful. I think it was really, really good. The service was really good. It was really, well, I'm so glad. 
And so then I get here to the deacons meeting, and Andrew already started the deacons meeting, and here I am trying to scratch down, what did y'all do? This, this, and this. Okay, okay. So, uh, who, who said the devotion? So we did this and did this. Okay, everything was going good. So I didn't say anything. But what really impressed me with, with what Pastor Neil said last week, he said, you know what, Jim? He said that song and my message went together. You know how he does these things for us. You know how our problems sometimes, he just blesses us so much. And, and the song was the altar, and it blended so well. Okay, so the deacons had already started the meeting, so I says, you know, I said, well, who, who's supposed to do it? Oh, we got all that planned out. Uh, Andrew said that, Andrew said the devotion, and next week's going to be James. Okay, I just wrote it down. I says, well, I, I was supposed to do the devotion, but I just, you know, I just do, do what the, the chairman of deacons tell me. So. so the message I had prepared for the deacons meeting is, is what the, one, the Lord wanted me to share today with you after. And it's a, it's a message, uh, and I'd like you to turn to Romans chapter 12, 1 through verses 1 through 2, and we'll get it here, if y'all can. Therefore, my brothers, I employ you by God's mercy to offer your very selves to him, a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for his acceptance. The worship offered by my, by, by, your, it's by your mind, worship by mind and heart. Adopt yourself no longer to the pattern of this present world, but let your mind be remade and your whole nature and transformed. Then you will be able to discern the will of God and to know what is good, acceptant, and perfect. Let's turn, let's turn to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. I'm going to read uh, uh, verses uh, 10 through 15. First Peter chapter three, verse ten through fifteen. Let me find it myself here. Okay. Whoever loves life would see good days, must restrain his tongue from evil, and his lips from deceit, must turn from wrong and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For the Lord's eyes are turned towards the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord's face is set against the wrongdoers. Who is going to do wrong if you are devoted to what is good? And yet... If you should suffer for your virtues, you may count yourself happy. Have no, have no fear of them. Do not depute, but hold the Lord in reverence in your heart. The more we stay in God's word, and listen to Jesus say, said in the Gospels and other books of the Old Testament, we learn how much effectively do what he wants us to do. Jesus wants us to know him through his love of us, his life-giving death and resurrection. Each of our testimonies we can share with others. The more times we share 
the more times we are blessed. In God's grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, share your testimony. My prayer is for you all today to walk closer to Him. Days are coming for you to take a stand on the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for this, dear Lord, that we know what our world is coming to, dear Lord, in different ways or factions. Some of us understand, some of us don't. But the main thing that we need to keep in our hearts and our minds is you. And practice, no matter what happens to us, no matter, don't get angry or upset. Keep looking towards you. Your eye turn to you. Our eyes turn to you and praise you and glorify you and tell our stories of how our testimony works in each of one of us, dear Lord. Give us the boldness, the courage, and the simple words that you want us to say to other people. Share our testimony, how we love this church, how we love each person in our church, how we love our deacons, how we love our pastor, how we love our office managers, and we just love everybody here, that we are just collected, and we love, even though sometimes we go up and down in different ways. We know that you're there for us if we share our testimony with others. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Anybody else want to share a testimony a little bit? Bill, Bill's coming up here. Sure. I don't know what I'm talking about, but God does. God is good all the time. He's been very good to me. And this church has been, the deacons and this church has been very good to me too. They lifted me up and and saved me when I was down in the dumps and, and going through hard times. And he, the deacons here and the preachers, and they just brought me back. And I love this church. And God loves this church too. And, he's, and there's another person I want to talk about. Is I have a very good friend here today. I worked with him for years and years, and he's always kept me straight and in line all the time. I'd, I'd have a lot of problems, and I'd always go to him and talk with him, and he always led me to the Lord and kept me going on the right track. And many of y'all in here have kept me going on the right track. If, if it wouldn't have been for this church and for my wife and my family and everybody, I wouldn't be here today. But God has us here for a purpose. And I know I don't do the greatest job, but I try. And I think the Lord knows I try. And we all can do what we want to do and just do it in the way the Lord wants us to. And thank you all for being here today. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, please. It'd probably be easier if you got up. I am a woman of many words. I'm, a, I'm an old lady, but I tell you, I still am as excited as I have been since I was very young. And I cry all the time. I feel embarrassed and I cry all the time. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, I believe I get so excited when we have vacation Bible school because that's how, that was an inspiration in my life that I came to fall in love with God. I was the sixth child, but grew up with no father. My mother worked forever to bring us all up and 
definitely she was the best mother that God could have given me, and that was one of the first blessings. But there's so many areas I can go to. My friend over there, Almira, and I have been friends since we were 15. Uh, we were in junior high school. We've gone through a lot of things, and all through, still, we're still friends. So she and I have shared the Lord, have shared pain, have shared a lot of things. I could be here all day, but I'm gonna make it short. The reason I get so excited about Vacation Bible School is because when I was very young, like four or five, six, seven years old, every Sunday a man would come by our neighborhood selling Bibles. And uh, the first time I sat on the stairs and he started telling me stories about the Bible, Noah's all stories every Saturday, and, and I'd ask my mother, can you buy me the Bible, mother? And she says, no, mijita, I can't afford that. So this would go on and on several Saturdays. And there's where I got, I fell in love, that God was real. And that has followed me all through the lot, my life. I have, I can, I love to write stories. Uh, Michael encourages me to write some of my stories because some of them were tough. That when I was in junior high school and they beat me up, there's some that, I went through a lot of dangerous things, and God was right there. I'll, I'll, this man, as he was telling me a story about the Lord, I found out that God was real. Because so many things, miracles happen in my life that I get excited and emotional because I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is real in everybody. God is real no matter what nationality we are, how rich, how poor, it's do you believe that God is real and what does God do in your life? I'm not very smart, but I tell you what, what God has put in my life has made me a happy, fulfilled person because I see people and I love them. If people hurt me, I pray for them, but I'm not perfect. I have so many faults in it. That's why I think when I take communion, I cry because I actually see God bleeding for my sins. And I say, my gosh, he loves me so much and I'm nothing, I'm unworthy, but this gives you the power to love other people and to tell them about the Lord. I'm a no lady now, you all, I don't wanna tell you how old I am, but I've been, I used to do child evangelism programs. I used to work with the girls from the Alasan courts from the, uh, with all the, Colored girls, I used to have camps with them. So I've been doing this all my life, telling them the real thing in life, don't fake yourselves out. The real thing in life is, is God real in your life? And he is real in my life, but I get so emotional all the time because I know the realness of him in me. We, I go through problems like all of you do, all of us do. Our children, their spouses, our grandchildren, our neighbor, there are problems all the time, but the big factor in it, in it is I cry and I feel God uplifting me. And some of you know me real well that we have had prayer meetings here. You know my weaknesses, you know my strengths, but I want to encourage you and to tell you how grateful I am to be coming to this church. In, nine, in 1991, my husband divorced me and I, Almira used to come to this church and, and, and my children were all grown up when that happened, and I didn't have a job, I didn't have nothing. And I started coming over here with Elmira, and I wanted to sing, I wanted to get up here and, and do some singing, but I couldn't because I was crying all the time. <laughs> so I said, I can't be in the choir, I can't because, of, so I stopped coming over here for a while, and then the Lord blessed me with finding a man that the first thing I asked him before I date you, do you know God? He said, well, I've accepted him because where I worked at, there, were, there was a pastor that, or whoever went and would tell the people about the Lord, and he accepted the Lord. So we started going out, and this, he's the most wonderful man that God could have sent me. He's loving and, and doesn't stop me from talking. He never talks. I talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I want to tell each and every one of you that I love you. This is what makes me cry because I get so emotional when I see you. <laughs> Daniel, hello Daniel. We love you and miss you. Michael loves Daniel and I love you. My kids over here. And uh, I'm very, uh, 
conscientious of, of children knowing the Lord. So let's get excited when we have the next. <laughs> anyway, I love you all, and, and you're blessed to have this church. If the Lord guides us, we'll get bigger in, in people. But, you know, we're big in here. We're very big in here. And love you guys. Hello, I'm, I'm Bonnie, <laughs> and um, they're asking for testimony and uh, whatever someone said, it, it crossed through my mind about uh, trials and that we, what we go through, and you know, we all, all are facing trials at different times and, and how God works in our lives. And uh, he, he taught me in a, a trial uh, that I wanna share that testimony about and um, we were on vacation with my family. We traveled uh, quite frequently twice a year to different places. And the, this trip, we were in October of 2012. We were going up to Washington. I have an uncle up there, and my son lived up in Seattle. So um, we were gonna you know, visit people and, and see the sights. And when we went up there, we camped in a uh, campground near my uncle's house and my son met us there, so we had tents and uh, were having a nice time. This was on the, I think it was the very first night. If it not, it was the second night. But um, my son was into photography and was showing me, you know, it, my, the, my sisters and mom had gone into the tent to go to bed. And we were playing with the campfire. And he was showing me how slow photography, you know, if you show, slow the shutter feet, you can get these weird things on your on your neg on your negative, and it was quite. A, we were drawing words with the flame and stuff, and uh, we did that for a little while. Then he said he had to run to the little men's room, which was a you know a little hike away, and I said okay, you know. So while he was gone, I got the best idea of what I could write, and so I said oh I can do that, and so. You had to, you know, get ready, get your little flame on the stick or whatever. And when you set the camera to go, because it's going to go really slow, you had to run around to get on the other side of the campfire so you could write this word. Well, I did that, and I got uh, just a few steps, and I tripped on a root because it was pitch black except for around the campfire, and uh, I broke my leg. I, I felt it snap and I sit there. I'm laying on the ground and my first thought was, my first thought was, well, my first thought was, did I, was I doing anything when we weren't supposed to be doing? You know, you kind of think you get reprimanded sometimes for things. And I thought, no, I don't think I've been doing anything. And, I, and my next thought pretty immediately was, God broke my leg. You know, I'm sitting there laying there and I'm thinking, God, you broke my leg. And I, I'm laying there and thankfully it didn't hurt yet and uh and i'm thinking about that and so um by the time i got nobody in the tent woke up they i yelled nobody would wake up <laughs> but my son finally heard me yelling and the people next door i think thought somebody was murdered and they were staying clear and uh, but once you know the ambulance comes they get you out of there while i'm laying there i'm thinking how am i going to handle this you know and, you know, God broke my leg, you know, I, and, and I'm just sitting there, and I start trusting him, okay, you know, what are we going to do about this, and, and as, as the ambulance comes, and I think, I thought, I'm just going to pray for everybody, I thought, that's the only way I'm going to get through this, I'm going to take my mind off of me, and I'm just going to start, I prayed for the, all the ambulance people there, and, and the guy in, inside, the guys carrying you out, guy in there, and, and you know, the funny thing is that they all We'll say, can you pray for me too? And, and I said, yes, I can pray for you too. And we got to the emergency room and I'm praying for all of them in there. And a lady comes up, can you pray for me too? Yes, I can pray for you too. And, and my mind was taken off of the pain. Of course, they do give you something once you get in there. <laughs> and all through the thing, you had to go through the surgery and you had to go, uh, go through all that. 
But if I had broken my leg in San Antonio, we all know the hospitals we would end up in. You know, they're good hospitals. I was in a really nice hospital. It was a brand new one. They had all the latest gadgets. My family loved it. They thought it was like a resort. They had a piano player down there. They had all the snack bars. I mean, it was really a nice place for them. And I'm thinking, well, God, you picked a good hospital. And then, <laughs> and then as we get going and the, and the treatment and, the, and the, everybody was just so loving. And finally they said, well, uh, they're gonna put me into therapy. And, be, and we, you know, we're there on vacation, but it was such a nice hospital. My family got to go during the day to vacation, check in on me, you know, how you doing? Okay, well, we're going. And so when, um, when the therapy started, my family came to the doctors and said, you know, we, we can give her therapy because you only get therapy maybe once or twice a day, you know, for 45 minutes maybe if you're lucky. And they said, we're all here, they're on vacation. They don't have a job they have to go to. They, don't, they, they were free to do, the, do it. And so uh, the doctors thought about it and they said, yes, that would be all right. And so I not only had a fit, I had round the clock therapy. I had uh, everyone saying, can you do this? You gotta learn how to do this, you gotta do that. Every, round the clock therapy I had, and I believe they were available. If I didn't hear, they'd be working but they were all available. God worked that out for me. And um, I recovered very quickly because on the second day in the hotel, which we'll get to that hotel in a second, my sister said, okay, well, you gotta, you gotta get in the car today. And I'm going, what? Because an uh, ambulance with a wheelchair took me to the hotel. And so uh, for me to go from that to get into a, out of the wheelchair into the car, I couldn't fathom that, but it, we got that worked. Um, on the hotel, because not only did I break my leg, which had a, uh, you know, one of those titanium things put in there, I broke my wrist too. That was like, oh yeah, and my wrist. And so this wrist was, it was in a big cast, and my, uh, my right wrist and my left leg, meaning a bathroom facility at a hotel would, I needed a grab bar on the left. You know, just be specific about, well, we need this, wheelchair, get in there, and this, and this, and this. And the, my family looked while I was still in the hospital, and they couldn't find one. And so finally, my son, he, he said, tells a story that he said, well, let's try that one. And it was a lodge-looking thing. And they said, well, we can't afford that. He said, well, let's just stop, because they were getting desperate. So they went in, and the people said, yes, we can help you. We're going to give you this room, and don't worry about the extra. You know, they weren't going to charge anything extra than a regular room. And it was a luxury hotel, and it had this nice big room, every, th every detail that I needed. It was big enough to house all of us in one room. And um, throughout this whole trip, everyone God put around us just took care of everything. When we flew back finally, and I was thinking I would always mow my mother's grass, and I thought, well, we've been gone. It's going to need mowing. Who am I going to get to mow my mother's grass? Because it would be tall. And when that night that I arrived, my friend from work, which I hadn't talked to yet, just, you know, mostly, you know, I don't know, what did we do, text back in 2000? I don't know. Somehow she knew I, had, I was in the hospital up there because I worked with her and I wasn't there. But um, she called up and said, oh, if it's okay with you, me and my husband are coming to mow your grass today. And I thought, how did you know that I was worried about that? But again, God, God just prepared the way. And, and so I do want to, we wonder why, why do these things happen to us? God has given us the, the opportunity to let our faith shine in those moments. And, and this is what, um, when I, I do write cards, and I often, if you've got a card and you might have been ill or something, or have probably an inch, something you don't understand why this is happening. I may have quoted this, and I'm so thankful I learned this, and it helps me. It is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and in, um, it starts at verse 8. I'm not sure how far it goes, but I'm going to start reading it. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed, we always carry around in our bodies the death of Christ so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. 
For we who are alive are always be, being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, uh, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Um, oh, and I started too soon. I'm going to go back to this other part. But we have this treasure in jars of clay. This is our body, jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not in us. So when we're, when we are like that, when we are ill, and when we are no longer strong, that's when he can do his most work in us, that he can, uh, uh, we can let his light shine, not our light, because, you know, before we, we might be saying, oh, hey, look, look what I did, you know. We might, we might start doing that, but when, he can, when we can give him the glory, even while we're suffering, and when we can remember him, even when we're sick and stuff in and, and, and that manner, that's when he can really reveal himself to the world. And so uh, the next time that you are going through a trial, when you think, why did this happen to me? I, I kind of hope you remember this passage, that, that he brings these trials sometimes for love for us, he wants us to depend on him and he wants to give us the opportunity to put into uh, into real truth to others that we believe it in this uh, time such as that that we really believe what god has promised us and uh, thank you <laughs> I got one little thing, you know, from all the stuff that we've been talking about today, you could tell God has a reason. God is knows what's going on with each one of us. And, you know, why you make a left turn, I don't know, but God makes, God knows, you know. I mean, he has, you know, back in 83 with me, I was drinking a lot. And I had a car accident, uh, I was drunk, and I got in a fight with the bridge covert, with the car, and the bridge covert won. And I broke both wrists, I broke, broke my collarbone, I broke this arm in two places, I broke my wrist, and I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. But, you know, I, my parents had to move me out of the house to move back home, and I'm in my 20s, and I do not want to do that because I had to depend on somebody, I had to depend on my parents again. But God had a reason. When you're down, that's when he shows his strength and how powerful he is and all the love he has for you, you know. You know, God is great. I don't know if there's anyone else that has anything to say or give us a testimony. I don't know how to do the invitation to respond. But one thing I did want to mention to Jim when he was up here, I said, Dan, hand me the Bible so I can see what Jim's talking about. The only thing that was highlighted in this Bible was the, the first thing he talked about, Romans 12. I mean, you can't see it, but I was going to I'll put through all the other pages. It's <laughs> the only one that got highlighted. I, I'm freaking out. But anyway, that's how God works. You never know how he's going to work, but he works.